Hey there everyone, Atayish here, back again with another video and I have created a lot of videos in which I handhold you, walk you through with the concept, explain everything in detail. This video is different. This video is kind of a handholding but not entirely. This is not a spoon feeding video. In this video, I'll present a scenario to you and you will determine that why things are happening and why things are not happening. This video is going to test your skills on JavaScript, a little bit on the React, a little bit on the dynamic thing and a bit on Next.js as well. This is going to be a very, very fun video. Absolutely basic. You don't have to worry on that. So let me walk you through with that a scenario. Let's go ahead and code along with me and walk with the concept itself. So here's my terminal and let's create a new project. So I'm going to go ahead and simply say, uh, hey, NPX, just go ahead and simply create next app just like always and don't you worry in case you have never heard about next years that's fine we are not going to be using any tricky concept of that just absolute basic of that so project ne next uh, let's call it as uh, crash this so we're going to crash this project so that's why the name is crash this and uh, that's basically it nothing much fancy i shouldn't take much of the time to actually build and produce and populate this project itself Okay, so come on, do it faster. There we go. And let's go ahead and uh, simply go ahead and move into crash this and open that into our VS code. Okay, fine and nice. This is our, let me walk you through, zoom this all the way in. We have a lot of real estate of screen this time. Okay. So what we're going to do in this one, we're going to install a package and we can see that this is our basic public app. Let's move into pa pages index.js. And I don't want anything inside this one. So I'm going to just remove this one. And let's have a simple div. And inside this div, let's have a simple h1. And let's say crash, crash this app. Save that. Save that and let's run this app. In order to run this app, we all know that we can look into package.json. The script is npm run dev. So let's go up there. So let's clean this up and say npm run dev. And this should start the server. Uh, there we go. And there we go, crash this app. Now, the good thing about the Next.js is in the recent version, there has been a lot of modification being done. One of the good thing of these modification is that in the initial days of the Next.js and the initial days of server side rendering, it was difficult to figure out the bugs. If there was a bug, it's not going to show you until unless you move things into production a lot of time. And this is still the case and that's why this video exists. Let me walk you through with the code part again. Okay, so that we have seen that this is all going fine. There is no problem in that. Now I do have a library which I want to install in that. That's a pretty popular library used quite a lot, highlight.js. Uh, this is a library used to highlight any of your code. Now implementation, we are not gonna go too much in depth. You can see the weekly downloads, pretty popular as a library. We're going to just copy this one and move into this and let's kill this one and install this npm install highlight js now we're going to be building up a simple component that takes input as a code and just present it that's it no fancy stuff so let's go ahead move into the pages i'll just create a new file directly up here i'm going to call this as my code.jsx there we go now let's go ahead and build this one first we need to go ahead and import head from next.js the reason for importing the head is because this highlight JS requires you to inject some of the style sheet right into the page itself. So that's why we are actually using that. So we're going to say next, please bring head and there we go. Okay. Once we are done with that, now we need to import highlight JS. So highlight JS and let's go ahead and bring this from highlight JS. Now, not only that, you also need to import some JavaScript as well, that special JavaScript, which comes from the highlight JS. Uh, this is a kind of a basic syntax, how hi uh, this highlight JS works, nothing fancy, apart from my itching throat. <laughs> okay, so this JavaScript comes up from highlight JS, not JS, actually highlight package itself. And inside that highlight JS, come on, dot JS slash lib, and there we go we have a lot of languages and what we want to bring in is just the javascript there are more languages you can bring up but we are not interested in that now let's go ahead and simply create a basic function we're going to call this one as simply my code 
this my code expects that you pass me a prop and we're going to call this as code so that anybody can use this component and can pass me this value that I need to display. Now, how do you display? First, let me export that as well because obviously we need to export this function. Export default my code. And there we go. Now let's talk about this function itself. So how this function actually works in highlight.js, pretty simple again. First and foremost, you need to bring in this highlight.js and then you have to simply register a language. What language this component is going to highlight. Although in our case, it's not going to highlight too much, but just wanted to show you the syntax as well. So this is going to be JavaScript and JavaScript. There we go. Language is now registered. Once it is done, then we have to simply bring in highlight.js and initialize the highlighting. So init highlighting, start that, and that's all you gotta do. Now, once you're done with that, then you can simply go ahead and return your component itself. In my case, the component is going to be simple render of whatever the code is being passed on. Now, again, I can go ahead and simply do something like this, pre, and there we go. And simply, you can inject a code component. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, just like that. And that's all it takes. Now, whatever the code we are expecting and uh, injecting at line number five, this code, we need to actually pass this up here as well. So let's go ahead and do that. Let me first move it like this. There we go. And I'm gonna pass on a variable just like that. Pretty simple, nothing fancy. Now in the highlight.js, there is also a class you can pass on whatever the language you have. So in this case, we are gonna be passing this JS. Now, additionally, what happens is the reason why we have brought in this head in the highlight.js, you have to inject this head as well in order to make sure that highlighting properly works. This requires a little bit more work in the recent version of this, but this is gonna work fine. So we're gonna say that, hey, we want to have a link just like that. This link is going to have a reference that this is a style sheet. So we are gonna have a rel that this is a style sheet. Okay, and also what we're going to need is an href. And don't worry about the error that is injecting. That is a different kind of error that we are getting. So what we need to have is simply highlight dot CSS that is coming up. And that is the reason why we are bringing head. The reason why we are getting this error because we can only return one JSX. So we can easily fix that up. We can actually go ahead, do this. And coming up here, we can go ahead and do this. So now this is all good. And this is a perfect component that can actually work fine. Okay, I hope there should be no problem in having this kind of a component. This is pretty easy, pretty basic that we can have. Now, interesting thing comes up is when you move on to this index.js. Now, obviously what you want to do is you want to pass on this my code component. So let's go ahead and do this. So my code is gonna come in like that. And this my code is a self component. So that's how we can close this. And we have only one thing to pass on as a parameter or a prop, whatever you want to call that, is let's pass on this prop. Now, how we are gonna do that? This is a string, so we're gonna say console.log. And in the console.log, I'm gonna go ahead and say simply, hi Hitesh. <laughs> there we go. And also a semicolon, okay. Now what is going to happen is really, really interesting up here. Let me walk you through with that. So if I go up here, this actually crashes my app. Now the good thing about the Next.js is how they have modified and updated the Next.js and their error processing. When I say, hey, now errors are improved in the updation video of Next.js, a lot of people don't understand what they have improved. This is exact scenario what they have improved here. Now you can see that this is an error. In the previous version of the Next.js, this exact same example that I presented to many while teaching Next.js, this was not an error. This was a perfect build at that time. When you put this code into production, then it creates an error. But I'm gonna walk you through that why this is happening a little bit, and I will also walk you through how you can resolve these kinds of error. Now, the common error that you can see is document is not defined. And yes, your document is not accessible to uh, this highlight.js. And this is where you need to do some research work that why this is happening and why this error is coming in. I'm not gonna tell you that, at least in this video. You can ask me later on in some live or something. But now, what we're gonna do to resolve this error is we're gonna just comment this my code because this is not a proper way to import this one up here. So for that, first we need to import some classic stuff from Next.js, and this is dynamic. 
Now, once you have this dynamic, now I'm gonna go ahead and import this my code. So let me go ahead and say my code. And this is gonna be imported dynamically. So there we go. Once we are done with that, then I'm gonna fire up a simple function, a kind of a callback you can say, or anonymous function would be a better name in this case. Okay, and then we are gonna say that, hey, I want to bring in a component, which is my code. Okay, that is fine. This is also not going to fix the problem. You can go ahead and try that out. This is still going to say, hey, this is all good. And if I go ahead and reload, uh, notice still the error is not gone. The error will be gone once you pass on another parameter, which is a prop itself. So SSR is gonna go ahead and true. And I'm pretty sure, uh, not true actually, false, dolls, <laughs> come on. There we go. And there we go, finally. Okay, now what this is going to do as soon as you save this, this is going to remove the bug and now we have this highlight JS. Although the highlighting is not kicking in as we expect it to be, but still this is a good and nice concept that we have learned up here. Now, importantly, this is not the only way to fix this issue. This is one of the way how you fix the issue. Bigger question is here, do you really understand how JavaScript work? Do you really understand what is the concept of dynamic? Do you really understand why there was an error that document was not accessible or document was not found. This is where your core concept actually comes in and this will help you to actually research more about the things. And I expect in the comment section that you will present me the reason that why this error happened, how we were able to resolve this error via this method and what can be other ways how you can resolve that. Hint, you can resolve this via hooks as well. But again, this was a fun video. I hope you have enjoyed. Hope this video has given you some thoughts to process and learn a little bit more about the JavaScript and its internal working as well. If you have enjoyed this video, let me know in the comment section. If you have enjoyed this, hit that subscribe, share this with your friends, ask them that why this is happening, what's the reason of the failure and how we were able to solve this. Challenge your friend, share this video and let's catch up in the next video.